Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of acid-base chemistry. In the next series of videos, we're going to be working on doing calculations on long A titration curve. Now, we want to do these calculations as much to find out the pH along the titration curve as we want to find out what species are at each point on the titration curve. So we're going to do a point at the beginning. We're going to um, do a point halfway. We call it the half equivalence point. Uh, we're going to calculate at the equivalence point, after the equivalence point, and just to round it out nicely, I picked a point right in the middle that's going to help us see what we call the buffer zone. A buffer zone resists changes in pH upon the addition of small amounts of acids and bases. And you notice how flat it is along here, and that's because it's resisting change in pH. All right, the first step in doing a titration curve, in my opinion, is I like to always find out what is this volume at the equivalence point. That's going to help us really simplify our math and clarify our concepts. I like to do what I call chidi chidi voom voom. In our case, we have propanoic acid. Propanoic acid has one acidic proton. It's this one on the end of the formula. Uh, the molarity, or volume we're given, excuse me, is 40 milliliters. So we're doing a modified voom voom. We have 0 0.100. So that's the number of H pluses. This is our volume of acid. This is our molarity of acid. And make sure you show that number one. You have to prove to the reader that you understand um, that it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. Now, we want to find the volume of base at the equivalence point. That amount of base that exactly neutralizes our acid. And so we have 0 0.200 molar base. So that's our molarity of base. And if you look at sodium hydroxide, it's got one hydroxide or ability to accept one proton. All right. And if we did this math, if you solve for the volume of base, it's 20 milliliters. So what that tells us is that this point right here is 20 milliliters right at the equivalence point. An important point along that way, and this is kind of an awkward scale, but halfway there is the half equivalence point. So I'll call that volume of the equivalence point over 2. That's going to be our easiest point if you can learn something critical about it. All right? So that's why we wanted to know that so we can recognize this volume of the equivalence point over 2. So now let's clear our screen and move on to the next page. So let's look at our first data point. This is with 0 milliliters of base added. So this is our very, very first data point that we have. So remember our acronym from before, DOC saves everyone. So the first thing you want to do is see, do you have a dilution? And we do not have a dilution um, because we've not added base yet. We do not have a stoichiometry. So we get to jump right into our equilibrium here. So my acid is 0 0.100. I don't have any other source of my conjugate, no H+. Plus. I like to use A for acid. The reason is it's one step to pH once I've solved for A. This is technically 0 0.10 minus A, but A is so small, we're going to call that approximately 0 0.10. This is A, this is A. You have some room here. Um, you should write always at least once in the problem, write your expression. And so this is the propanoate. I don't want to rewrite that for the sake of time. Then this would be H3O+. Plus. You can't do that on your test. You have to write that out. That's the luxury of being the teacher. I'll write this one. 5COOH. 
So that's your expression. We're going to substitute our egos into that expression. So I get a times a over 0 0.10. Our equilibrium constant was given at the very beginning of the problem as 1.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. So a is going to equal the square root, because I have a squared, right, of 0 0.10 times 1.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. My a, which remember represents my H3O plus. Always, always check my algebra, kiddos. You know any of us can do a finger slip on that calculator. I tried to be careful and use a spreadsheet. But I always want you, that's a good way to, to check to make sure you're paying close attention to the videos and that you understand what I'm doing. Okay, you should be able to estimate the pH since this is a 3 there. You know this is 2 point something, and we'll get to use calculators on this part of the test. And so our initial pH is 9.43. And the key is, at, point, at the first point, the only thing we had present was our protonated form. All right, and we'll put that up on the uh, titration curve as we get to the end of this series of videos. So we're going to move on to the other points in our next videos. Until then, you should know by now I hope I've become your beloved chemistry teacher. Signing off.